Hey everybody, thanks for watching the VSO Gun Channel. Uh, just a really quick impromptu video. Uh, it's been a really long time since I've cleaned this gun and uh, I just got it home from the gym. I'm all sweaty and you know the whole nine yards, but uh, it needs to be done because we've got a you know a big range ses session coming up this weekend and I thought it would be a good opportunity to, uh, you guys have seen this LPS lubricant before and I was basically what I'm my goal for this video is to uh, just to kind of clean down this rifle um, you know do some cuts of the of the process and really uh, really kind of highlight uh, what we've been doing with this LPS lubricant uh, so for those of you who don't know we've been we've been we did some winter testing on it and now we're into summer it performed great in winter and what I was really impressed with is the ease of cleaning on this so basically the the cleaning process of this video that we're gonna really focus on is the bolt carrier group uh, this gun has had somewhere around 1500 to 2000 rounds through it since its last cleaning and it's fairly dirty and that's kind of I did that on purpose because I wanted to really uh, really highlight the uh, the ability of it to clean so uh, what what we're what I'm planning on doing here is the only thing we're using for cleaning is the LPS lube these uh, this is LPS one by the way uh, these set of four dental picks and this roll of paper towels that is all we are going to be using today for this process and so we're not using any special tools or anything like that just to really highlight how uh, how well it does but one thing I wanted to do uh, before we got into that is I realized that um, I never really did a full uh, synopsis on this on this rifle a uh, viewer asked me about uh, about it earlier today, and I've had several inquiries about it. And I realized I've just never actually sat down and done a synopsis of the of the parts that are involved. So before we do that, I'm going to just roll through them real quick. Front to back, we have the op comp from Elite Iron Suppressors. Uh, the gas block on this thing is just a generic low profile. I think I I don't remember where I got it from, but it's just a you know a junky cheapest lowest bidder on that one pretty much uh, this is a Geisley mark 3 rail this is actually actually sadly not made anymore uh, and what's really nice about this is uh, see these grooves in here they're designed so you can't get your fingers in there and burn yourself so that was the the concept behind this shape in here really like this I really wish they continue to make it uh, but they don't anymore what's really also neat about it is there's a rail in here uh, in internally where the bracket slide where you attach your rail pieces uh, so it still uses the Picatinny rail uh, attachment system uh, their newer rails use either key mod or they also have the M-Lock system remember they're the pioneers of the M-Lock system uh, continuing this barrel is a DPMS mark 12 barrel it's an 18 inch 1 and 8 twist barrel it's a it's an H-bar profile uh, and we use that for uh, longer range applications. Obviously, that's how this thing's set up. Uh, continuing on, uh, hand stop, Magpul, obviously. Uh, great piece of kit that they produce. Uh, this uh, forward ring here, this sling attachment point is also a Magpul for attachment. Uh, obviously, the venerable ACOG, this is TA31A, I think, or G. I don't remember. Uh, I'll annotate it, but it is the green chevron uh, setup, and it's uh, calibrated for 5.56 out to 800 meters. Upper receiver on this is actually a, a scratch and dent upper upper receiver that we got from uh, I do believe it was Bravo Company. Uh, scratch and dent upper receiver, generic charging handle, nothing special there uh, except for this uh, tack latch. This is a Badger Ordnance uh, tack latch. Lower receiver um, is actually a company we're not going to mention because uh, they went under and left a bunch of people holding the bag for them. Um, and we're still looking for the uh, owners of that company if they are uh, doing any business. We're watching out for them and make sure that you guys know uh, business names and stuff like that of those people so that you're not buying stuff from them. But moving forward, there are a few things I wanted to highlight from various companies on this lower receiver that are kind of neat. Uh, this extension. Here uh, for the magazine release is from Odin Works. This thing's I, I really like this thing because uh, in the dark it increases the surface area of that sort of thing. 
so it, it, it's really helpful. This trigger is the Geisley Automatics National Match Trigger. It has their DMR spring in it, not their not their actual uh, match grade spring. It's the silver spring, uh, not the gold spring. And it was just a little bit too light for me with the with the gold spring, so I I uh, went with the DMR spring. Uh, Magpul MOE hand grip, another great product from Magpul. Magpul, obviously. Uh, Magpul UBR stock and the reason I use this UBR stock is yes it's heavy and that's on purpose uh, the reason I use it is be to counteract this heavy barrel that we have here uh, this thing is considerably heavy uh, and it's like that for a reason for rigidity and accuracy and all that sort of stuff we want a heavy barrel up here for a, a DMR sort of SPR kind of build uh, and the UBR stock helps balance that if we if we hold this gun it balances pretty easy right there uh, with no problem uh, the other thing the great thing about the UBR is it has a fixed cheek weld with an adjustable length of pull and of course storage uh, those are removable if you don't like those uh, coming back over uh, standard uh, selector switch this point here is a GG and G uh, quick release point and this thing is actually as you can see it's angled up to a point and that keeps it from sliding around a whole lot uh, I really like these these are high quality you should check these things out and obviously our standard the savvy sniper sling so that is basically the rifle uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do uh, the one thing that I did not mention on purpose was where is what we're going to do this video on, which is the cleaning of this bolt carrier group. Um, this front pin's a little tight, and so um, standard buffer in here, standard just carbine buffer, nothing super fancy there, uh, and standard weight spring. Uh, but the one thing that we did want to talk about was this is actually a chrome bolt carrier group uh, from Rock River Arms. This is old school uh, bolt. The only two uh, parts that are not standard on this thing is it has a single piece gas ring in there instead of the, tr the tri gas rings, uh, the three gas rings. It has one gas ring that's continuous and it also has a four times extractor strength, strength spring in the front. This is, um, as you can see, this is not an M16 carrier. Um, I highly suggest an M16 carrier, uh, but this thing, uh, I had to basically shave weight where I could, because <laughs> this thing's kind of heavy. So I saved a little bit of weight uh, by going against uh, the standard and not using the M16 carrier. But anyway, uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and start cleaning on this thing. So as you guys can see, this thing is like exceptionally dirty. Like I said, somewhere around 1,500, 2,000 rounds through it. Before we really clean, I'm gonna go ahead and break it down so you guys can see the uh, how bad it actually is in here. <laughs> Look at that stickage. So when you're talking about bulk carrier groups, uh, one of the things that's really important is uh, you can go with a almost completely standard bolt carrier group however I find that the that this piece uh, being either chrome or nickel boron really really extends its life uh, you can't tell that this thing is chrome right now but it, it is actually uh, but it's uh, it's really served well uh, without having any problems because it is uh, got a harder finish on it but so if we break that open you can see the four times extractor strength strength there and then this single piece gas ring. I don't know if the thing is picking this up, but this is basically a sleeve that just kind of goes over the extractor there. So without further ado, we're just gonna pop this LPS off here. And I'm not gonna bore you guys with like the actual step-by-step -step cleaning of this thing, but uh, basically I'm just gonna kind of spray it on there. Remember this is the LPS one. Uh, they have a heavier weight LPS2 uh, for those of you who like, uh, you know, a heavier weight. But just for initial impressions, you can see how dirty it is. 
You can see that just really cuts through all that nastiness with minimal effort. Just wipe it down. And this is really not a critical part anyway of your uh, of your gun. The interface between this and your bolt face, or your bolt face and your and your and your chamber face. Uh, that that is the part that's most important, obviously. Uh, but if we take this, same same spot, just do that. You can see we're starting to get clean already. It's making a huge difference. And basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of go to work on it, and I'll pick up with you guys here in a little bit. Uh, get a tooth in there real quick. Let's see, it's just basically <laughs> dissolving all that crap. And uh, I'm sure that by the time we're done with this, we're gonna have a nice big pile of shredded paper towel. But uh, I'll pick up with you guys in a little bit after I get this thing cleaned down. The one thing I did wanna highlight is I ran inside and found this real quick. Uh, these things are also offered in like uh, field ready pouches like this. This is basically you rip this open and it's got a towelette in there uh, that uh, is saturated with LPS-1. It's more rugged than your standard paper towel, but it's not like a cloth towel, if that makes sense. I would like to see something like this come in a little bit uh, grittier, something like almost like saturated sandpaper would be really nice uh, for the really hard to scrub areas. Uh, but once again, this is a field cleaning uh, wipe. So uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is actually above and beyond the call of clean. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, your bolt carrier group has to be like super spotless and your AR-15 has to be like super scrubbed. That is not the case guys, you guys don't need to do that. Uh, you should not spend more time, more than I would say 10 minutes cleaning your bolt carrier group. Uh, if, you, if you're spending more time than 10 minutes cleaning your bolt carrier group, uh, you're cleaning it too hard, straight up. And then a few minutes on the actual chamber of your of your uh, upper receiver, highlighting this area in here. Really go after that. Uh, the rest of it is really just a conduit for this thing to slide in. The only really areas that you need to hit really hard on a bolt carrier group are obviously up in here. You want to clean your extractor and inspect it for damage. You want to inspect all these teeth for damage. You want to inspect all this back here for any kind of uh, stress uh, fractures or anything like that. And you're gonna get a lot of buildup in here. This is actually clean in here. This is just uh, discoloration due to uh, <laughs> the probably 15K worth of rounds that have been through this gun. Over time, you're gonna see that this is gonna get discolored. Uh, but as stock, it was it looked like this. But this, I mean, there are some spots that I didn't hit, but like I said, I only spent like 10 minutes doing it. Uh, you can see there's some, discolor some uh, discoloration in here, and there's actually some, it looks like the finish is actually being eaten off right here. I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not, but uh, I could wipe that all I wanted or scrape on it all I wanted, and that's not gonna do anything. But anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna put this sucker back together real quick. So one of the things I look for in, in uh, various products is not only you know does it perform well, but also thoughtfulness uh, of products like, uh, for instance, this this little pouch. You can throw this in pretty much anywhere. This could go in your pocket, and you can take it into the field. But the other thing that I, you know, thought was relatively thoughtful is on the cap here, the place for your for your straw. How many of your spray cans that you know use straws? Do you have rem oil or anything like that? <laughs> How many of you still have the straw? I'm gonna venture, if you're like me, not very many of you. Uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on about the LPS-1 uh, that was that is kind of neat is this is actually dry to the touch. I completely scrubbed this thing and it was soaking wet at one point, point in time. So I sprayed over there. I basically sprayed the group just to kind of like let it sit as I was using it. This is completely dry. What happens uh, with this stuff is a lot of times, you know, if you're storing your rifle upright like this, if you've got uh, an oil, it'll recede with gravity and it'll drain out the bottom of your gun. And a lot of times you'll see 
if you look at your lower, you'll see it running out of the trigger guard or out of any of these port ports in here. Uh, and you pick the thing up, you grab hold of it, and your hands all greasy, and you're like, ah, oh, damn it. What's unique about this stuff is it almost forms like a powder coat on the parts. And when you're using it, when the gun heats up, it almost reactivates. I mean, not, we're not talking like frog lube wax or anything like that. We're talking it reactivates in that it forms just kind of like an oil layer after uh, you've started using the gun again, and that captures some of the particulate, but it doesn't do it such a such to the point where it's going to like really clog up your gun, which is something that I thought was pretty nice. Uh, their birth is actually as an automotive-based lubricant system, and so that said, they clearly have an aptitude for things that run for a long time very hot. And uh, I think uh, firearms definitely classify as one of those systems, or at least if you run your firearms like I do, uh, you want something that's going to run just fine when it's hot. And that's uh, what their system is basically designed to do. But anyway, this is a real quick look at, at the LPS lube. Um, as you guys can, as I said before, we're running out of daylight, so I'm going to go ahead and run in and finish cleaning the chamber over there. But uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that... Uh, you know, this, this stuff is something that we've been testing for a little while. It's, I, I really like it. The guys like it. We're also going to be doing LPS 2 testing. Uh, it did really, really good this winter, which is not something that I see out of every lube in the winter time. And remember, guys, check out all the people that we have links for in the description. Uh, they help us keep these videos free, especially companies like 1776 United, which uh, is a company who made this shirt. Uh, they have a discount code down there. In the, uh, in the description box of the video. So if you guys want some of their apparel, I know they also produce the official Talking Lead shirt and a few other ones. If you guys want that kind of apparel, uh, go over there, look in the description box, you'll see a, a coupon code for a discount to their website, their whole inventory. And uh, they're also gonna be doing a couple shirts for us in the coming months. Uh, so if you want official VSO apparel, will be uh, going through 1776 United as well. Awesome company, great guys, they get it. They're all about the Second Amendment. We like to support that sort of stuff. Uh, but remember guys, you just watch the VSO Gun Channel where we bend the fit and scratch the finish so that you guys don't have to. Thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you next time. Video not sponsored by Monster. I wish it was though. <laughs>